Let's pray together this morning as we uh, begin our time, this time of the service. Father in heaven, we are so thankful for the opportunity we have uh, to just be inspired by you, to be affected by you, to have your spirit living in us. And Father, today as, as we come together, I hope that our prayer is that we are ready to hear what your Spirit has to say to us. We've already accepted and know that we are always in your presence, but even as we've been here this morning, and we've sang songs and we've gathered around your table, we have experienced you. And through the time that we have ahead of us together still, I pray that we will enjoy being in your presence and what you have in store for us. So I pray that you bless our time right now as we go to your word, as we learn from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last Monday, Lisa and I took Bethany to see Les Miserables. I think that's how you say it. For those who really don't know how to say, speak French, we just say Les Mis. Um, but we went to see that movie, and it was a good movie. I, I enjoyed it. In fact, I, I said on Facebook, it was the best movie I'd seen all year. And so far, it's the only movie I've seen all year, but I'm going to tell you, it's going to be hard to top, because it is an excellent, excellent film, an excellent story. But the reason we went to see it... One, I thought, boy, I could get a lot of sermon illustrations out of this movie. But that's one of the reasons I wanted to go see it. But Bethany uh, comes home and says, her French teacher says, hey, if I go see this movie and I write a paragraph about it, that, that will satisfy her for, um, satisfy the teacher for having a semester report for French class. So, hey, sign us up. Let's do that. And we went to see Les Mis. Um, but like I said, it's a great movie. But here's my take on Les Miserables. It's a story of second chances and redemption. A fellow named Jean Valjean is paroled at the beginning of the movie after serving 19 years in prison for stealing a loaf of bread. Back in, and this is early 1800s, by the way, if you didn't know. Because he was a convict out on the outside of the prison, he was treated terribly. But he was shown mercy by a bishop who gave him food and a place to sleep. But Jean Valjean treated that kindness with contempt when in the middle of the night he decided to get a bag and steal a bunch of silver from the bishop and he took off. Trying to, I guess, try to make it because he couldn't make it anywhere else since he was a convict. But he was caught, red-handed. He was brought back to the bishop. But Jean Valjean said that the bishop had given him the silver. And of course, the police didn't believe him. They brought him back to the bishop, and the bishop actually confirms Jean Valjean's story. And in fact, he said, and you forgot the most expensive pieces. And he hands them to him. And he takes, takes off. But with this gift of mercy, Valjean found a new purpose in life. A chance to be reborn. A chance to start fresh. So he changes his name. And the rest of the story is really his story. Of becoming an honest and honorable man. Now, there's so much more to the movie, to the story, than what I've just stated. But the reality is, Jean Valjean's life, like ours, is a summary of all our choices. He was imprisoned because of his choice to steal. He became a different man because of a bishop's choice to show mercy, and his choice to respond in kind to the mercy that he had received. Choices. Our lives are filled with choices. 
toward the end of his life, Joshua stood before the people of Israel, much like Moses did, and he challenged them to make a choice. I'd like to take you to Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. And this is what Joshua says. So fear the Lord and serve him wholeheartedly. Put away forever the idols your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River. So it went all the way back to Abraham. Put away the idols forever. The ones that your ancestors worshipped when they lived beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt. Serve the Lord alone, he says. Now, if we bring this into the 21st century to us today, here's what Joshua might be saying. Whatever you have done to put distance between you and God, whatever sins you have committed, whatever choices that you have made that did not honor God, put them behind you and serve God alone. It sounds very similar in some respects, to what Paul tells us different times throughout the New Testament, but specifically in Romans chapter 6, verses 12 and 13, where, where, where Paul writes, he says, Do not let sin reign in your mortal body, so that you obey its evil desires. But rather, offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life. Choose God. Choose what he wants and put away the past. Put away all the things that have kept you from him. That's what Joshua is saying. Then he goes to verse 15. And in verse 15, Joshua says, But if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Going again back to Abraham. Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. Sounds so easy, doesn't it? Make a choice. Easy. Just choose. I think I know what choice most of us would make. But then there are things that happen in life. What if life just doesn't turn out the way you want it to? Do you still make that same choice? You know, the past three weeks we've talked about being filled with the fullness of God being filled with His Spirit, God's Spirit living in us. The whole idea is that we don't have to go through life empty. But you know what? It all comes down to the choices that we make, whether or not we really live a fulfilled life. And that's the point, I think, that Rick Warren was trying to make to Oprah earlier this month. On a TV show that Oprah now has called Life Class, it's, it's on the OWN network, O-W-N network. This episode was based upon a sermon that Rick Warren had preached at his church in Southern California, a Saddleback Church, and the title of the sermon was Winning the Hand You're Dealt. Now his premise is this, life is like a game of poker. You have to play the hand you're dealt. <laughs> I mean, you can't just say, oh, I don't want these cards. Give me some more. They give, the dealer gives you the cards, and you have to play the cards you're dealt. So what's the hand? I mean, if, if we're going to learn a lesson out of this, what's the hand? What are the cards? And Rick Warren thought about that, and he, he came up with the cards that are in the hand that most of us are dealt. He says, one card is chemistry, your genetics, your makeup, your personality. I mean, and these are things you can't control. I, I can't control how tall I'm going to be. 
you know, I can't control certain things about my life and my health. I mean, because some of it's just encoded in my genetics. There are some things I can't control, but one card is chemistry. The second card is connections. I mean, when you're born into a family, you have no choice to that family, do you? I mean, those relationships are just handed to you. And then within that family, you build relationships or you make connections with people that you have no control over those connections early on in life. Then there's the card of circumstances. And that's probably pretty self-explanatory, right? Because there are some things in life that happen that you cannot control. And then he says there's consciousness. And consciousness, he says, is what you think of yourself. Because from a very early age, you're told certain things about yourself. And depending on who you are and what your family connections are, what your circumstances are, what your chemistry is, what those things are could be good or negative. But it really comes down to what do you believe about yourself? Those are four of the five cards. Now, he says the last card is the wild card. It's the card that can make or break the entire hand. And a wise player, he says, can take what seems to be a bad hand and make it a winner. That's all the introduction to what I want to share with you at this point now. I want to share with you a video. It's, it's l- longer than most videos that I would share with you in a sermon. But it's worth it to share it. It comes from this TV show. As Rick, and with some help, shares with us what this fifth card is. Now, I do want to tell you that the audio on this video is not stellar. Uh, It's not terrible, but it's not stellar. It's basically someone shooting a TV with a video camera, and that's where the audio comes from. Um, And at one point, you're going to hear somebody talk about Portia. Portia is a girl in the audience who's struggling with the whole idea of why doesn't anybody love me? Why can't I find somebody to love me? And so when you hear that talk about that kind of brings into context some of the things. But I want to share this video clip that talks about this wild card. And you need to pay attention to what you will see and hear. It is worth your time. Let's watch. class, we've covered four of the five cards in our poker hand with Pastor Rick Warren. Chemistry, connections, circumstances, and consciousness. All hands you are dealt. Right. Okay. You say the fifth card makes or breaks your entire hand. What do y'all think it is? Very good. You got a smart group. Smart group. Choices. Choices are the wild card. And The wild card can change the suit and the number of any other card. So I may have been dealt certain things in my chemistry and certain things in my connections and certain things in my circumstances and things I didn't even control and things that people said to me that were put into my mind, tapes and things like that. But one of the greatest gifts God gave us was the gift of free choice. So I didn't choose my chemistry, but I didn't choose to get healthier. Yeah. Okay. I didn't choose my first connections, but I can choose to build healthy relationships now. I didn't choose my circumstances, but I can pray, and I can trust God, and I can believe that all things work together for good for those who love God. Yes, yes. And I I believe I can rise above it. And I I, I didn't choose what everybody told me growing up, the things that I was told about myself. And some of the things you were told were simple lies. But I can choose what I think about today. 
Right. That's your choice. Yeah. So the choices of life really uh, is the, the wild card where God says, now I've given you this, let's see, what are you going to do with what you've been given? Okay, so I'm looking at Facebook. Angela Ramsey Lockhart says, I always feel judged. I feel the very things that make me who I am are the reasons people look at me differently. Feel like a square peg trying to fit in a round hole. And then I look at um, Brooke underneath who says, feeling like I'm less than others due to my parents never being in my life. Okay, so let me just say to all of you on Facebook right now, to everybody who has a complaint on the tip of your tongue, I want you just to shut your mouth and watch this tape because Pastor Rick had one request for tonight's show to include a man who he says is one of the best examples of winning the hand you're dealt. This is going to shut your mouth. It's going to shut your mouth. Just close it right now. <laughs> Take a look at this. Born in Australia without arms or legs, 30-year-old Nick Vujicic has become a symbol of triumph against all odds. His inspiring YouTube videos have been watched over 100 million times. It's a lie to think that you're not good enough. It's a lie to think that you're not worth anything. But the road to self-acceptance was excruciating for Nick. For years, he was harassed and tormented at school. When he was 10, Nick attempted suicide. After years of feeling worthless and alone, Nick's awakening came while reading an article about a disabled man who refused to let physical limitations hold him back. In that moment, Nick says he discovered the power to take control of his life, and he has. Today, Nick surfs, he snorkels, he golfs, and plays soccer. He's traveled to 44 countries with his message of hope. Even the worst part of your life can come together for the good. And less than a year ago, Nick married the love of his life and danced at their wedding. We're standing up for Nick. Now, this is what so unbelievable. As you've heard, people complain about the spots on their face and people complain about not having a boyfriend and not being able to have the mates of their life. What happened to you that you were able to take all of you, take your chemistry, being born with no arms and no legs, take your connections, your relationships, your life circumstances, your state of consciousness, and then choose, make the conscious choice that you were going to take all of that which the rest of the world looks at you know, undeniably as a pretty bad hand and that you were going to turn it into something, you were going to be exalted by it. What, what happened to you that you were able to do that? Oprah, I know that you love to think out of the box and have things outside of the box in your yeah. show. Yeah. And I know that you love illustration. So if I may illustrate in about 180 seconds, can I do something a little crazy but it'll sure. be powerful? Go Is that ahead. cool? You got a camera behind me, right? Yeah. I'm going to show you. Come, come, come. The best step right here, is there enough light here? The chemistry, I was born without arms and legs. The chemistry I could not change in my life. I know that God didn't give me this pain, but what the enemy tried to use for bad, he turned into good. Then, the connections. I want to tell uh, Porsche, uh, look, I'm, I'm a guy, I love cars, okay? And I love Porsches more than Ferraris, okay? And, and I want everyone to know that, that we are wonderfully and fearfully made. And until you can actually understand that we are all wonderfully and fearfully made from God, um, I want you to know that, that you will always be trapped and chained and you will be stopped. But when you have the incredible power of faith in action, nothing holds you back. And you're beautiful just the way that you are. No worries. For me, I felt the connection. Yeah. For me, in my life, I'm thinking, man, I'm not going to get married. I can't, you know, can't even hold my wife's hand. What connection am I going to have? But you know what? All things come together for the good for those who love Him. Hey, this is a little bit high. I'm going to break my arm, man. This is pretty crazy. All right. I'm going to break my arm. Circumstances. Being born without arms and legs, man, it's all about choice. When you ask me what it was, 
I had parents who were my heroes. They always said, you, you can either be angry for what you don't have or be thankful for what you do have. Do your best and God will do the rest. Then consciousness. Because I gave my life to Lord Jesus Christ and the renewing of my mind, wow, I knew that I could be unstoppable. ago we were here and a woman was talking about how she was worried about whether she was intimidating guys or how she's going to find the right man i'm sure a lot of you have that story about i can't find the right person i'm so what made you believe that you were going to find the love of your life and i hear that your wife is now pregnant we have a boy <laughs> yeah, baby. Uh, she's 21 weeks pregnant 21 I mean, I, I never imagined in my whole life that um, I would ever find someone who truly completes me as a kid. Um, I, I really thought that I have no purpose. Um, there is no meaning to my life. If I'm just going to have pain in my life, then, then why continue to go on? But I just want you to know... Is that what you were thinking at 10 when you wanted to kill yourself? Yeah, because I actually put my hope in, as some other people put hopes in different things and oh I wish my circumstance was different, I wish I was born different. And what other people think. Exactly. Yeah. And for me in my life as a kid I'm thinking man I'm going to be a burden to my parents, I'm not going to have a job, I'm not going to have a future and I'm like man I'm just going to kill myself so I try to drown myself and by the grace of God parents I want you to know something very very important. If it wasn't for my parents, my heroes who planted those seeds of love and truth and hope in my life, I wouldn't be here today. Mm -hmm. When your teenager hears you say you're beautiful and they put a do not disturb sign on their door, do you know what I'm talking about? I want you to know to respect that, but go through their window. <laughs> you have to. Because in my life, I, I, I wanted something more. Even if I had arms and legs or not, or I was the richest person on earth, I had a billionaire come up to me and cry on my shoulder and say, help me. My 14-year-old daughter was called ugly at school. She doesn't eat. She won't eat. She's in hospital. Make her eat. Mm -hmm. Hope itself, not just for this life, but the next. You want to know why I'm happy and content and full of joy? Mm -hmm. Is knowing that no matter what five cards come up in my life, as long as that fifth choice is understanding by faith that my Heavenly Father owns all the chips in the poker game. So no matter what we have, we're playing with God's chips. For me in my life, I know that people need hope. And, and what we're looking for, money, drugs, sex, alcohol, a different circumstance, a new relationship. Oh, if I just was wired differently, no. Stop looking everywhere and just look up. I saw that and I thought, wow, that's amazing. Uh, <laughs> But it, that just doesn't have to be Nick's story. I mean, yeah, he had unbelievable circumstances that we could not even imagine. But we have circumstances nonetheless with our chemistry and our connections and our circumstances and our consciousness. We have choices that we make. And his story can be our story too. We need to just stop looking around at everybody else and comparing ourselves to everybody else and start looking up. There is where we're going to find peace. When we start looking up, there is where we're going to find joy. When we look up, that's where we're going to find hope. A lot of people, maybe even you, might have thought or are thinking, uh, I wish I had been dealt a different hand. But what if you were? What if you had been dealt a different hand? What if that hand were worse than the hand you have now? 
What if that hand were better than the one you have now? Would it really change your mindset? Nick makes a powerful point. As long as I know that that last card, that choice that I make, is making the choice to understand by faith that God is the one that's in control. He's the one that has all the chips. They're his chips. Then we can live the life that he really wants for us. And we can find that hope, that joy, that peace. Paul says it this way. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. In other words, stop looking around and look up. He says it this way in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right... Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. But yet we live in a world that can so e- we can so easily get turned away from all of these things that are excellent or praiseworthy, and we can start thinking about the negative, negativity and the criticism and the cynicism and all the things that bring us down. And when we start getting brought down by those things, guess where we're looking? Out here. Rather than up there. Rick says to Oprah in another part of the show, he says, every hand has its limitations. But when you stand before God, one day, he is not going to ask you, why weren't you more like your sister? Why weren't you more like your brother? Why weren't you more like this person or that person? He goes on to say, you are one in, he he says, you're not one in a million. You are one in six billion. And I would even take that a little bit further. You are one in however many billion of people that have lived on this planet from the beginning until now. God does not make clones. He does not make copies. He makes us all unique. And we have these cards that are out of our control. But we have one card that is under our control. The choice. What are we going to do with the hand that we're dealt? Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for such an inspiring message from this young man who has overcome so many odds. But Father, help us not compare ourselves to him. Help us just to look up to you and know that our circumstances are unique to to ourselves. Our life cannot be measured by comparing to others. But we can understand that by faith, You have given us the opportunity to serve you or to serve ourselves. And today, I pray that we would choose you. Because any other path that we take will just lead us to a dead end. So Father, challenge us, encourage us, help us right now that we might choose the path that you have already laid out for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We're going to sing the song, Change My Heart, O God. And and a lot of times that's just what it takes. If we're going to change our perspective on things, if we're going to change our mindset, it it starts in the heart. You know. Um, And if today's message, a little different from most messages that, that we have, but if today's message has touched you in a way to where you want to be able to say, hey God, I, I, that just reminded me that you are the one in control. That you do hold the chips. And I want to choose to 
give you control. I want to choose to let you invade my life and make it to what you want me to be.